Hello, good evening and welcome to Primetime News. I'm Nadim Majid. And I'm Florian Rajendran. Let's take a look at tonight's headlines. The President prepares to expand the national effort against drugs. Madhravya Sambandheng Neeti Virodhi Kataitu Valadhi Kishima Saniyak Dinna Api Lashtine. Close to 200,000 persons across 13 districts battered by heavy rains. Mahinda Desha Priya spearheads the National Elections Commission. MP Vasudeva Nana Kara makes a statement on the avant-garde deals. <laughs> Suspected mastermind behind Paris attacks identified. The third phase of the national program to establish a drug-free country commenced under the auspices of President Maithripala Sirisena in Kegol today. Speaking at the event which was held at the St. Joseph's Girls College in Kegol, President Maithripala Sirisena said that a presidential task force on drug prevention has been established. Speaking further, President Sirisena said the district and divisional secretariats too have been empowered to further the course of drug prevention. The government received 55 billion rupees of its income from cigarettes and around 60 billion from alcohol. So this sum of 115 billion is an important factor to the state's income. But as the president of this country, I am ready to raise my hands and terminate all liquor sales licenses. Although you applaud, my dear friends, the problem is whether such a thing is possible. Do not forget that if we do this, then they will topple the government. That is not a problem either. We are not prepared to grant people any concessions for the sale of intoxicants or for illegal activities, be it out of friendship or loyalty. We must mete out the maximum punishment. If you look at the past several years, the consumption of alcohol, especially beer, has increased drastically among women. It will not be easy to overcome this challenge. This is not something that can be done through the law. Pressure cannot be exerted to accomplish this. We must all aspire to do this. We need to set ourselves a goal. Awards were presented at this event to individuals who supported the national program for the eradication of intoxicants. News First Kegol correspondent Asela Vikramanayka also received an award at this event. Welcome back to Primetime News. On to our developing story tonight. Close to 200,000 people in 13 districts have been affected by the prevalent extreme weather conditions. The depression over the Bay of Bengal, which has caused the heavy downpours, has also affected Tamil Nadu in India. The northern province experienced severe flooding as a result of the downpours with several low-lying areas being inundated. The Jaffna District Disaster Management Centre noted that more than 1,000 homes have been damaged as a result of the flooding which also destroyed 54 homes. Over 50,000 people from 15,000 families in the area have been affected. 42 shelters have been established for those displaced by the floods. 7,000 people have been housed in these shelters. The Kilinochi district too was affected by floods. Our reporter says 11 spill gates of the Irinamadu reservoir have been opened as a result of the incessant downpours experienced over the past several days. While low-lying areas in the district have been inundated, more than 16,000 people from over 4,000 families have been affected by the floods. More than 2,600 displaced have been housed at 13 shelters in the district. Boats have been used for transportation and for the relief effort as a result of numerous roads in the district being submerged. In the Mulitip district too, vast areas of low-lying land have been inundated. Our reporter says that spill gates of several reservoirs in the district have been opened. Rough seas brought on by the inclement weather have prevented fishermen from setting out to sea. Flood waters also inundated the Manar Jaffna main road, hampering vehicular traffic. The district disaster management center says over 1,400 people from 350 families have been affected in Manar. The displaced have been housed in 14 shelters in the district.
Floods were also experienced in the Mathale district. Traffic on the Galevala Kakarawa road was brought to a standstill as a result of the flooding. The police also have closed the Kakarawa Matugalma Galkiriava road due to the risk of a cave in near the Kiralava bridge. The two spill gates of the Kalavava have been opened by 20 feet each as a result of the water level reaching spill level. Irrigation engineers say 24,000 cubic feet of water is being added to the Kalavava every second due to the heavy downpour. Low line areas and access roads in the surrounding areas were inundated as the spill gates were opened. Our reporter says vehicle traffic on the Galnava Kakirab road via Aukana has been hampered. Several by roads have also been inundated. One person was killed following flooding in Arachikatu Chilau. Identifying the victim as a 27 year old man from Atona Vilavatta, our reporter added that a large number of homes in the area have been inundated. Meanwhile, in neighboring India, the depression over the Bay of Bengal has also pounded Tamil Nadu with heavy showers. The Press Trust of India reported that the number of people dying in rain-related incidents in the state so far has climbed to 71. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister J. Jayalalitha said she had taken stock of the situation at a review meeting with her cabinet colleagues and officials. Condoling the death of the victims, she announced relief for 400,000 Indian rupees each to their families. Rainfall halted briefly early this morning, but houses and roads were flooded with water as people struggled to carry on with their daily routine. Here in the island, prices of vegetables have increased significantly in the market as a result of floods. The prices have increased in this manner as a result of the inclement weather in areas where vegetables are being cultivated. News First was able to uncover that the vegetable cultivation has been affected to a great extent. Half of the cultivation has been washed away. The carrot seeds have been washed away. The leeks have been washed away as well. The rainfall the cultivation has rotten. Now we cannot cultivate and that is why the situation is like this. The amount of vegetables that reach the economic centers have also reduced. There are no vegetables based on the requirement of the country. Usually vegetables come from Jaffna and other places. But these days vegetables do not come in. During the next month, the month of Christmas, the demand might double. Only 10% of vegetables arrive to the economic centers. If the rain persists, there will be a scarcity of vegetables. These were the prices of several vegetables in the market today. Developing Story, brought to you by... Speaking at a media briefing held today, MP Vasudevanana Akara commented on the controversial dealings of avant-garde. A loss of 1 billion per annum was incurred as a result of this being taken away from the Navy. 1 billion each year according to the commander of the Navy. It is correct. That is our opinion. That is what we pointed out when we were in the government. It was given to avant-garde via Rakhna Lanka against our stance. We did not know it would be given to avant-garde. As far as we knew, it was being given to Rakhna Lanka. Rakhna Lanka then gave it to avant-garde. Rakhna Lanka is a state institution. At that time, this was covered up. Meanwhile, in Tissa Maharama this morning, Minister of Housing and Construction Sajid Premadasa spoke of the harmful effects of statements made by certain ministers. Minister Premadasa made this statement while addressing an event held to declare open a new building of the Tissa Maharama Mahasenpura Vidyalaya, which was constructed at a cost of 4.8 million rupees. We have the urge to protect President Maitripala Sirisena. 
We alongside with the people of this country took Maitri Pala Sirisena to the throne of the president in the midst of several difficulties, challenges, threats and state terrorism and by defeating the political barbarism in this country. So those who did not render their support to this effort may not understand the seriousness of this program. So I would like to clearly state at this point of time that no matter who says what, no matter what rumors they spread that Maitri Pala Sirisena was appointed via Facebook or that this revolution was caused via Facebook, we will protect him with our lives. A media briefing was convened by the heads of the commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption today. The media briefing was held in order to create awareness on International Anti-Corruption Day, which is commemorated on the 9th of December. However, the journalists gathered at the media briefing were keen on gathering information on the work of the bribery commission. We won't cover up a case or investigation. We are working on all investigations. However, you need to keep in mind that we only have 50 to 100 officers. We do not have a director of investigations to date. It has been almost 11 months since you assumed duties. Why has it taken so long to fill the vacant position? There's a simple answer for this. It's true that I commenced this phrase 11 months ago, but I properly assumed my position only on the 22nd of October. We did not have a commissioner for some time. There were many impediments of the same nature. Who should take the responsibility for those obstacles? I will not speak about the past. You continue to reiterate that the past should be forgotten. This is an institution that has been operated with the taxpayer's money. Should the people claim accountability for the money that was spent during that time frame? I did not claim that there are no investigations. I spoke about the obstacles I had. So were those obstacles a problem for investigations? Was it a problem when recruiting employees? It was a problem when recruiting employees. There's a trickle-down effect in everything. I would like to end this press briefing. Thank you very much for Eight more suspects who were arrested and detained under the Prevention of Terrorism Act were released on bail today. Bail was granted when the suspects were produced before the Colombo Magistrates Court. Eight suspects who were arrested under the Prevention of Terrorism Act were produced before Colombo Additional Magistrate Arni Artigala this afternoon. The suspects were ordered to be released under strict bail conditions following submissions made by the Attorney General's Department. The suspects who were banned from overseas travel by the court were released on two sureties of one million rupees each. Moreover, the suspects who were released on a conditional basis were ordered to report to the CID twice a month. The Chief Minister of the Northern Province, C.V. Vigneshwaran, arrived at the new magazine prison in Colombo to meet the detainees who were engaged in a hunger strike. Meanwhile, Minister of Prison Reforms, D.M. Swaminathan, also arrived at the magazine prison this afternoon to meet the inmates who were arrested under the Prevention of Terrorism Act. We had a meeting this afternoon which was co-shared by our Minister, Honourable Minister of Law and Order and we discussed this matter with the Attorney General Department and the prison officials regarding the detainees and their custody. And we took some firm decisions to say that 124 and 85 people have given letters to say that they are willing to go in for rehabilitation and those letters will be favourably considered uh, by the Attorney General's Department and they will make a decision very quickly in what stage that they can be given bail. Yeah, and the first set of rehabilitation probably will happen within a period of 10 days from today. That is, the first set of people who are really entitled to rehabilitation will be given their rights to be rehabilitated. Meanwhile, a protest was staged opposite the Colombo Fort Railway Station, urging the release of political prisoners. The protest was organized by the Tamil United Liberation Front. <laughs> We request that all political prisoners be released immediately without any conditions. They must be given a general amnesty. The president is vested with that power as per the constitution. Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca was given a general amnesty. He was also detained as a political prisoner. He was released and was provided assistance. Similarly, all political prisoners who are detained at prisons must be released on a general amnesty. A solution must be provided for the national issue as well. But if more time is wasted, the situation could aggravate. <laughs> We urge that they be at least rehabilitated and released. The president must protect what he promised. 
There can be anything in the law. There are loopholes in the law. If the president is saying that these prisoners cannot be released at this point of time, that is something which cannot be accepted. He is avoiding it for some reason. Although he does not say so, he has said so indirectly. He says that his hands are tied. And sometimes he says that he is in favor of releasing them. This is a matter of life and death. Those who are engaged in this fast have taken a stern decision that they will continue their hunger strike until a solution is provided. Even if they have committed an offence, they have served a prison term far more than required. So no one can say that they were pardoned for no reason. Meanwhile, speaking at an event in Hangun Kula Palace today, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa commented on the release of political prisoners. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa expressed these views at a health camp held today in line with his 70th birthday. There is terrorism around the world. Until it is eradicated, we will have to face this problem. Some people think that it is all finished in Sri Lanka. What is happening around the world could come here. Therefore, we need to be cautious. Members for the Independent Elections, Finance, Procurement and Delimitation Commissions were appointed today. Mahinda Deshapriya was appointed as the chairman of the Elections Commission, while NJRB Sekar and former dean of the Jaffna University, Ratnajeevan Hu, were appointed as its members. Tavalingam Kanagaratnam was appointed as the chairman of the Delimitation Commission. The presidential media unit said that A.M. Fonseca was appointed as chairman of the National Procurement Commission. Udita Paliakara was appointed as chairman of the National Finance Commission. Several trade unions and political factions have turned their attention towards plans to merge the Employees Provident Fund and the Employees Trust Fund. The topic was discussed at several media briefings convened today. Time has come to garner support to defeat the relentless effort to swindle 1.7 billion rupees to the hard-earned money of the people through the stock market. They are trying to create an establishment to collect and merge these two funds. The board is not skilled enough to manage the money, which is worth millions. There are a separate group of people called fund managers. There are experts around the world who possess the knowledge to manage such funds. A management fee of 2% will be allocated from the funds. This will amount to 30 billion rupees. This is a good racket. This is a risk. We know this out of experience. Therefore, we see this as a massive operation conducted in secret. There are three crises. The first is the financial crisis, second is the currency crisis, and the third is the debt crisis. What is the ulterior motive here? This is to direct the money to the stock market. They will buy shares in the stock market or buy shares of a bank. They will say that the EPF beneficiaries will profit from this and that they will receive dividends. This could or could not happen. An alms giving was held at the Sri Nagavihara in Kote today to invoke blessings on the late most venerable Madhulu Ave Sobhita Arms were given to 75 monks at the Dharmasalava of the Sri Nagavihara in Kote this afternoon. The Mahasangha, led by the chief prelate of the Kote Kalyani Sri Samagri Dharma Mahasangha Council, Most Venerable Dr. Ittapane Dhamma Lankara Thera, graced the occasion, which was also attended by a group including Speaker Karu Jai Surya. I visited Sobhidathera at about 4.30 on the evening of the 31st. He held both my hands with love and told me that he would not be able to come for several days and he asked me to protect the Nagavihara. He asked me to protect the devotees too. There's a culture in this country where we show respect to the deceased. It is good to do this appropriately, but in the case of a great person like Sobhidathera, we cannot simply have a two-hour long ceremony and then take the cottage to the crematorium. The highest honor we could give him was full state honors, and this is what we did. <laughs> Following the almsgiving, the Mahasangha and the laity carried the ashes of the late most venerable Madhulu Ave Sobhita in procession from the Sri Naga Viharya to the Kote Raja Mahaviharya, where it was placed in a special tomb near the Raja Mahaviharya. 
The third annual international conference of heads of schools organized by the International Schools of Sri Lanka, also known as TISSL, was held recently. The event was graced by Minister of Education Akhil Viraj Karyavasam. The presence of schools which follow the international curriculum provide the opportunity for, the, for all migrants to get their education while bringing some foreign exchange to the country as school fees. But these schools are not with their dis disadvantages such as sending enrollment, enormous amount of money out of the country as examination fee, fees and encourage students for foreign higher education, making the situation alarming in the future in respect of foreign exchange. However, it is heartening to note that such, such international schools also slowly but steadily switching over to the national curriculum as well. Moreover, the school children's education concerns country's entire future. Therefore, it is imperative that the government should take steps to monitor these schools to ensure the quality and uniformity of education in order to achieve national education goals rather than adopting a pessimistic attitude towards private schools. Even though we perceive that some schools are good and that others are not so good, what matters more is not the school that you attend, but which classroom you go to in a particular school. How do we reduce variability within schools? John Hattie shows that the most important and one that we have influence to reduce is the variability in the effectiveness of teachers. If the school heads and teachers can work together on the common progress of all students, such schools will witness not only growth, but also achievement. Well, that's a wrap of today's edition of Primetime News. For the News for Steve, I'm Florine Rajendran. And I'm Nadeem Majid. Just a reminder, you can keep up to date with all of the stories we're following here at News First by visiting our website, newsfirst.lk, and also by following us on Twitter at, at newsfirst underscore en. Good night and good luck.